Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Welcome to today's video. This is my second try at making the Total Recall demo video. I recorded two hours of material, edited it for two days, and for some reason I couldn't render it. Eventually I just trashed it all and now we're gonna do it again from scratch. Basically, the Total Recall is a three-channel preset manager, multi-stage and macro controller for your rack. Total Recall is a 6HP module designed to ease up transitions in live sets by controlling three CVs at once. It's a three channel control voltage generator, attenuator or attenuverter. It's an eight preset CV manager with two banks, bipolar and unipolar, instant, slewed or continuous change between stored CV values, three channel macro CV generator with smooth minimum max control via CV, trigger or manually. CV acquisition is done at 16 bits, CV outputs are 12 bit DACs. So that's a lot of tech talk but let's have a look at the module itself. I have it right here in front of me and right now we're in mode one which is the eight channel preset manager with continuous control over the preset selection. What that means is you can send the CV to this input over here and you can access different presets depending on the voltage that you send it. The second mode actually requires a trigger signal that cycles through them sequentially. So those are two ways to remotely select presets with this module. The presets themselves are basically the knob positions. So if you're using the module without any CVs on the inputs, these are three CV inputs that it has right here, then basically you are generating a voltage that comes out of the three outputs up here. And that voltage is reflected by the LEDs underneath the jacks. So right now you can also choose between bipolar and unipolar mode, right? So if I'm in bipolar mode, the LEDs will only go from unlit to fully blue right because you're going from zero volts to five volts and you can do that for each of the three channels once you've set the positions that you want for the three knobs by pressing the sample button over here it'll record those positions as that preset and it'll move you on to the next preset so you can see that in these four LEDs on the bottom here, these indicate the preset that you're in. So right now, as you can see, LED number two is lit. So that means I'm on preset number two. Now, there are only four LEDs and we have eight presets. So what does that mean? Basically, once you've hit number four here, when you press the button again, now you go back to one, but it's dimly lit. So that means it's number five. Right, so dimly lit are five, six, seven, and eight, and brightly lit are one, two, three, and four. So let's try something really quick just to exemplify it. I have my piston Honda module over here, which is a dual wavetable oscillator. If I simply connect both the oscillators in stereo over to my ST mix, we can already hear. And over here, you have the wavetable navigation for the module, right? And this is how you can do it manually, right? Now, if I connect the three outputs of Total Recall to the CV inputs of the Piston Honda wavetable navigation, we now have control over the wavetable right on here. And already this is pretty cool. Some people might prefer to have knobby control over the wavetable there rather than these little sliders, right? So right there already you have the first use of this module, which is just simply as a remote controller for three parameters, right? Now I can also put it in bipolar mode and that lets me go to negative as well. So as you can see, now the LED can light red as well as blue. So red means you're in the negative domain and blue means you're in the positive. And it goes all the way from a minus five volts to positive five volts, right? So, like I said, if you're not using anything in the CV inputs, basically these are just preset voltages, right? So I can create a sound that I like for the Piston Honda, 
and then record it and move on to the next one, create another one, move over, create another one, move over, create another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. And then we have eight different presets for Piston Honda, right? And this is with the smooth setting off, right? So they jump discreetly between presets. This already is very cool. You can create something interesting and rhythmic that way, right? And control the pitch of the oscillator with something else. But the timbre is totally determined by the total recall right here. Now, if I put it in smooth, it'll add a 100 millisecond slew or glide between presets, right? When I use the button. So instead of jumping directly, it morphs into it, but it does so fairly quickly. You can also do it slowly if you like. The way you do that is by using CV into the Meta Macro CV input over here. Okay, so let's try that. I'm going to connect my Select 2 over here, which also is just going to generate a voltage from minus 5 volts to positive 5 volts, and we're going to connect that to here. So now, depending on the voltage that I send the module, it'll go to a different preset, right? And if I use a sequencer, for example, the ground control, right, I can jump around. So they don't have to be sequential. I can jump around between presets. So, for example, let me record a little sequence here on track one. Right, and I'll play it. Right, so now it's skipping around between different presets by using discrete voltages out of my sequencer over here. I can also use something like a LFO, or in this case, a Chaos Oscillator, which is the Orbit 3. Access different presets that way. Now, if I engage smooth in this mode, now the continuous voltages will affect the smooth morphing between presets here. So let's go back to the select two so I can do this manually. And as you can see, I'm in preset one over here at zero volts. Now, if I slowly move to the next one, you see that it was a slow morph. So now I'm slowly morphing between my eight piston Honda wavetable presets, right? It does respond to negative voltages too. So if I'm at minus five volts, again, I'm at preset number one, right? And I move over to preset number two, preset number four, seven and eight smoothly all the way to zero volts again and then i'm back at one right if i remove smooth now it'll just discreetly jump after a certain threshold very cool if i use a slow lfo from my generate three for example here you can see how it discreetly cycles through all of the presets. If I put on smooth, it'll be a slow, smooth morphing. Which, in my opinion, is super cool. You may think, oh, but there's are only three CVs. That's very limiting. Yes, it can be limiting. In this case, it's not, because you really only have three inputs for waveform selection on Piston Honda anyway, so it's perfect. But you can always have more total recall modules, 
add a couple more and then you have nine channels and you can just split the CV to all three modules and that'll give you external control with the same source of nine parameters rather than just three parameters. By the way, bipolar and unipolar modes are independent of each other. They're different memory banks. So that means you actually have 16 possible presets, right? If you switch to unipolar, you get another eight. As you can see right now, most of them are blank. Most of them are at zero, right? Oh, and by the way, if I start making changes while it's being remotely modulated, these changes get recorded on the fly, right? So now I'm kind of just turning knobs here. That it's no longer so static. It's reflecting those changes that it picked up as I was twiddling knobs on the fly there. So now we have these two banks of presets. We have the bipolar and the unipolar, right? Now, if I do use the CV inputs, what does that mean? Well, then these become attenuators or attenuverters, right? Attenuators in unipolar mode and attenuverters in bipolar mode. So, for example, I can send a uh, LFO here from generate three. And let's make it unipolar so I can easily zero it. As I turn up the knob, I get a wider range of change from the generate three LFO into the x-axis of my piston Honda wavetable oscillator, right? So I can send, why don't I send the uh, pitch CV from my ground control sequencer to this one. You're getting like a rhythmic sequential discrete change on this channel. And this one can be the Orbit 3 chaotic oscillator. Now, preset number one here is a set of attenuator values, right? So if I set them all to zero, we get that static wavetable sound and I can move over to my second preset here and we can make it a subtle one and then we can move over to the next one and zero them first if you want and then have them be a little bit more more extreme and so on and so forth right we can make this one a little faster And the last one here, a little more subtle. So there we have it. This one's the static preset. And then as we move to the different ones, we get different amounts of the modulation sources going to their respective destinations there. And of course, you can combine the two uses as well. So I can have only channel two be an attenuator and the other two channels actually be sending preset voltages to the piston Honda. So, for example, one of these can be an attenuator, attenuating the volume of another oscillator that you may be sending to frequency modulate the first one, right? So you can have from no FM to full FM there by using this as an attenuator or attenuverter, right? Attenuverter is over here. And again, I can just put these back in here and I can still cycle through them. Now maybe use my contour one as a LFO. We need to attenuate the output of the contour one because it goes beyond five volts. So we'll use a select two here as an attenuator. Connect it there. And now we can make this slow again. And it cycles through the different presets smoothly, right? I can make it discrete if I want. Now, let's quickly talk about the other mode of preset manager, because there are two preset manager modes, right? 
basically the only change is that the input here now will only step through the different presets as you send it a trigger or a gate signal. So it will no longer reflect a continuous voltage. It will act more like a sequencer. You know, expect a rising edge to move it on. So it's like remotely controlling this button right here, right? The way to enter mode two is to hold the macro or sample button long enough to see the preset LEDs blink once, right? Now be careful, only once, because if you hold it too long, you will get a second blink of the LEDs, which will get you to the macro modes, right? So right now we don't want that. Let's just hold it. And as they blink, now we're on mode two of the preset manager. And the way we know that we're on mode two of the preset manager is that the preset display now gets inverted, which means that the unlit LED indicates which preset you're in, right? And again, when the LEDs are brightly lit, you're in the first half, so one, two, three, and four. So this is preset one, because one is unlit, two, three, and four. And then on five, you see the LEDs are dimly lit. So that's how you know that you are on four, five, and six, right? And now, the way this works is instead of a continuous voltage, you have to send it a clock or something like that. So I can use my contour ones um, rise output and keep it in cycle that'll generate like a clock now it's like a sequencer right in fact you can use it as a sequencer a three channel sequencer you can make chords for example if you control the pitches of three oscillators with these outputs you will be cycling through these eight chords now as a sequencer it is limited there's no reset it's not quantized so it's not really meant to be used that way but you can of course, if I make this faster. Now I have a couple of other modules here that could benefit from a preset manager. One of them, for example, is the Bifaco Noise Plethora. What I can do is I can grab these two outputs from the Piston Honda and I'll take outputs of my Noise Plethora, or rather one single output with the noise plethora here. And the noise plethora has three channels of noise generators. We're only going to use the first one. And we have a few different CV controllable parameters here. One of them, for example, is the filter cutoff frequency. So already we're controlling that with presets. And also we can control two parameters of each algorithm that we choose, right? So let's switch to using this manually. And by the way, using smooth again will give us that 100 millisecond slew between preset selections. Right? Now instead of using it for the cutoff here, I can also use it for the actual algorithm selection. Right? So for example, channel number two here determines the algorithm. And then I have the parameters of that algorithm on one and three, right? So that's one. Here's another one. Here's another one, right? And now I can cycle through them. Let's take smooth off so it's discrete. And now I'm really cycling through not only algorithms, of the noise plethora, but settings as well, the X and Y parameters, I can also record specific values for them. So that's, this is a super handy module to use in conjunction with the Bifaco noise plethora, right? For example, you can create different snare drum sounds and then have a different snare drum sound for each, each groove, each pattern that you create with your sequencer. For example, you can just use the uh, mod out over here to control which preset each pattern occupies, right? Let's make that cycle again. Very cool, cycling through the eight presets. 
noise plethora over here. And indeed, speaking of snare drums, I do have the Kraken over here. The Kraken is a snare drum modeling module by WMD, and it models a physical snare drum, like a, a real snare drum. So why don't we take one of the drum track outputs of ground control here to trigger it. We're going to trigger the head, actually, and we're just going to give us a kind of a four on the floor snare, right? And now we can take our four three channels of the total recall and let's have it static for now. In fact, I can zero reset all of the presets by just cycling through them and zeroing all of the pots. In fact, let's do that with unipolar mode. So just make it so you see all of the LEDs are unlit rather than blue. And that means that they're all set to zero. That's just always a good starting point. It's kind of like clearing the etch -a sketch before you do a new drawing, right? Okay, so all the presets are now zero votes all three channels so I can control I can choose which parameters to control on the Kraken there's so many of them one of them can be the shell for example so here this determines the shell size and material simultaneously right and then I can get uh, channel 2 here let's get these out of our way visually. Number two can be overtones or pitch. So right, so here I have shell, here I have pitch, and the third one can be decay. So how long or short that sound will, will be. So now I can have different drum presets and I can control them with a voltage if I go back to the other mode. So I've held the button until the LEDs blinked once. Now we can have, we can program completely different snare drum sounds for each preset. Right, so here we have four completely different snare drum presets that we can address by using maybe a pitch channel from the ground control or uh, the mod out here. We can program for each beat, have a different snare drum sound, for example, using the same two modules, just the total recall as a preset manager and the Kraken as the snare drum itself. Right? Or we can make it crazy and use some kind of uh, chaotic oscillator, for example, to randomize or chaoticize the snare drum preset selection within the same beat, or the same pattern. Right? If we put it smooth, remember it'll smoothly transition between the different presets, and this is interesting, it'll give us, instead of these dry hits, we can sort of hear pitch modulation, for example. So that can be very interesting as well. Now let's pull this all out and talk a little bit about 
the macro mode of this module, which is a different thing altogether. Now, first thing, how do we get to the macro modes? Remember, we hold the button for a little over a second until we see the LEDs blink, and that switches between modes one and two, which are the two preset modes, right? If I hold that button longer, it'll blink once, and then it'll blink again. And now we see that the last preset LED lights up and it stays lit no matter what happens. So even as I push the button here and change between these the first three LEDs, the last one stays lit and that's how you know you're in macro mode, right? Now to switch between the two macro modes, you do it the same way as you switched between the two preset modes, which is by holding the button only long enough for one LED blink and now you can see the last LED is dimly lit. So that indicates that you're in mode four, which is the second mode of the macro function, right? Let's go back to the first one. See, it's brightly lit now, so that's the first mode again. And the difference between macro modes one and two is very similar to the difference between preset modes one and two, which is just how the input CV is interpreted. So either as a continuous voltage or as a trigger. This becomes a CV in or a trigger in, depending on which mode you're in. The module will work very differently now. The way it works is when you cycle between the LEDs here, you're no longer cycling between presets, you're cycling between outputs, right? And what that does is it allows you to set the minimum voltage and the maximum voltage for each output. And that you do using these first two knobs over here, right? This one is minimum and this one is maximum. It even says there, macro minimum, macro maximum, and then this is the macro all knob you can manually morph between the uh, three outputs is minimum values all the way to their maximum values, right? So this can be very interesting. For example, to do something simple and easy to hear, why don't we simply connect three oscillators to this mixer over here and connect the three outputs to the volt per octave inputs of our oscillators. And now, first thing I'm going to do is put them on minimum. So now as I switch outputs, nothing changes. So I can now tune them. All right. So now we have the same note on all three. So what I can do is now program a different minimum note for each oscillator, right? By cycling through here. So now we see LED one is lit. So if I change my minimum knob, I'm changing the minimum voltage for that output, output one, right? Change to number two. And now we've set uh, my second oscillator's minimum voltage. And now we switch to number three and use the same knob. It's always the minimum knob. And there we go, right? So we've set the minimum voltage for all three of them. Now we'll set the maximum. So what I'll do is I'll set this one to maximum, this one to maximum, and this one to maximum. And now when we go back, we can set oscillator one's maximum voltage. Oscillator 2's maximum voltage and oscillator 3's maximum voltage. So now I can manually control all three oscillators with a single knob. That's what a macro knob does. So I'm going to go from the minimum voltage for all three of them to the maximum. Very cool. And now I can control this externally. So if I use, for example, a manual controller like the Select 2 here, see I can smoothly morph between maximum and minimum. If I take out the smooth button here, 
then it'll just jump between them. Right? After a certain threshold, it'll jump between minimum and maximum. But definitely this mode is much cooler to use using continuous, either your manual control with a macro knob or some kind of continuous controller. For example, why don't we use the contour one here, make it slower. Right. So now we're remotely controlling the smooth transition between the minimum values and maximum values of these three channels. Right. Now what happens if I switch this to the other mode? So it blinks once. Right, so this again becomes a trigger input. So it'll only respond, it'll flip back and forth. At each trigger that it receives, it'll morph between minimum values and maximum values. And if you take off smooth, it'll be discrete. Manually, it still works continuously, as it was before. Very cool. So, of course, this is just an easy way to be able to hear the change using it for oscillator pitches like that. But you can use it for uh, tempo of your song, the filter, how open you want the filter to be, and how much probability you want of a particular drum sound in your groove, so that when you morph, you know, you simultaneously make your beat faster, more active, and uh, brighter, for example. So that's one idea that you can use the macro mode for. So yeah, there's a lot that you can do. Each uh, user, I'm sure, will find the perfect use for their needs of the Total Recall module. And uh, that's it for today. I hope you liked the video. I hope you like Total Recall. Uh, there's more information in the video's description. You might consider joining my Patreon and uh, contributing that way or just sharing the video, comment below, all that stuff. So that's it. See you soon. Stay noisy.